Welcome to Module 2, Smart Lists and Excel Reports for Microsoft Dynamics GP 2013. In this module, we'll cover Smart List Designer, how to use it, how to modify and create Smart Lists. We'll cover Excel Report Deployment, both from an on-premise and an Office 365 environment. We'll cover the integration points and how you can collaborate with others using your Excel reports. And then finally, we'll wrap up this module with security. The security module or the security aspect of this module will basically cover Windows authentic authenticated security and how to set up security access to view Excel reports. So let's get started with the demonstration. So opening up Dynamics GP 2013, we can see once again that we have our start, our home screen available right when you log into the application. So the first area you want to look at is our smart lists and smart list designer. So by navigating from our Microsoft Dynamics GP tab down to Smart Lists, we open up our Smart List window. So in this example, let's open our sales and customers. So Smart Lists is basically an easy ad hoc tool that allows you to create on-the-fly reporting information and leverage that either in Excel or within the Dynamics GP application itself. So let's give you a few examples of how this will be useful in your organization. So again, starting with customers, we'll look at customers, just a customer balance smart list. So in this case, the smart list is querying the, app, or the database for customer name, customer number, and then also the balance for that customer. As you can see, it's formatted and it gives us the information we need. We also have actions that we can take against each record. So by going to the go to drop down button in the upper right hand corner, we can quickly navigate to other areas within the GP application by simply selecting from the drop-down list. For in this example, we go to a customer inquiry. It passes in the parameter or record for Aaron Fitz Electric into the customer query inquiry window. And from that point, we can see and do any information, utilize the information we need in order to either make a decision or to modify this customer's record. The other thing that we can do with the smart list is to easily create smart list favorites, uh, we can also do searches on the data. So in this case, I'm going to create a smart list favorite, and I'm just going to search on the customer name, or excuse me, we'll back out of this fin here, and we'll go to customers. So now I've got a list of all my customer information. So you can see I've got quite a few more fields available for as far as information I want to see. So if there's information that is available, that's not available on the screen that you'd like to see in this list, you can simply come into the Change Column Display window. In this column, this Change Column Display window, you can change the order in which you want the columns to appear in the smart list, and you can also add additional columns. So these columns that you can add to a smart list or existing smart list are predefined. So if you want to add information that's not in this predefined list of columns, then we'll use our smart list designer, which I'll show you that in a minute. So let's say we want to stick with these fields. We'll go ahead and hit OK. Now we got the information we want for this customer uh, navigation list or smart list. But let's limit this down because maybe I'm a salesperson and I only work with customers in Minnesota. So let me navigate to just the customers that I want to work with rather than to have them navigate and having to navigate through thousands of potential customer records. So in this case, we'll do our search and we'll go to our column name and I want to filter the list based on state because all my customers are residing in Minnesota. For the filter, I have an option between I can do a contained search, equal, between, etc. So in this case, I want to do equal to MN and go ahead and select OK. So now at this point, you can see that I've got my, my smart list, customer list now queried or filtered to just show customers that are in the state of Minnesota. So what can I do with this now? Well, I can really take this information and I can utilize it in different, report, different areas of the application. So first thing I can do is I can create a favorite, and I'm just going to create a favorite called Minnesota Customers. And I'll go ahead and add it as a favorite. So as we expand the left-hand navigation tree, we can now see that I have a smart list favorite called Minnesota Customers. So let's see how we can actually utilize that within the organization or within the, uh, within the application itself. So just minimizing this window, let me navigate to our customer list. So now in this case, I can use that same smart list to filter the number of customers that I see when I do a lookup. So in this case, my default 
is to show all customers when I go into the customer lookup. But if I just want to see customers from Minnesota, I select the drop down arrow on the left hand side, select favorites, and now you can see that I've got this Minnesota customers smart list favorite. When I come into the window and apply the filter, now you can see that it's a subset of filters or a subset of records based on customers that reside in the state of Minnesota. I can take it one step further and make this my default setting. So each time I come into a customer lookup, for example, I don't have to reapply the filter. So let's say I'm another example, I'm going, I'm creating a sales transaction. So I'll open my transaction window, create an order, and when I go, now when I go to my customer lookup, you can see that that filter is automatically applied based on the default view that I want to see for a customer lookup. So again, it's a quick and easy way for me to go in and simplify the information I want to see in order to, have, in order to avoid having to search through, uh, you know, maybe potential thousands of records. Now, as far as the smart list and how you can utilize this, it's not just on customers, but, you know, inventory items, employees, etc. So basically, whenever you create a smart list favorite, you can incorporate that into your, your, um, your lookups as well in order to limit the information based on what's pertinent to you. So that's one example of how to use a smart list. Go ahead and close my windows. The other thing that I want to show with the smart list is the, some, some of the changes that were made for existing users. So if you are an existing user, user of Microsoft Dynamics GP, there are some things that were, you know, we'll just say there were pain points for customers in the past as far as not being able to resize the left-hand navigation or tree. And so what we've done is we've added some features and functionality within Microsoft Dynamics GP 2013 that allow you to maximize the amount of information that you want to see. So basically you have the hide show, so you can ex either expand or collapse or hide or show the navigation tree. So again, this gives you full access to all the information that you want to see in your smart list itself. And we also have the option to increase or decrease the width. So if you do have some smart lists with longer names, you can simply just do a right click in the navigation or tree area in the smart list and increase or decrease the width that you want to see for the navigation. So again, those are just some very quick and simple ways that I can modify a, uh, a smart list, make it a favorite, and then utilize that favorite within the Dynamics GP application to make my job of finding data a lot easier. The other thing that's a favorite for people is to take this information and export it out to Excel. So with smart list, we have the ability to basically export any information right out to Excel. And now at this point, you have full Excel functionality. So whether I wanted to format or uh, you know, whatever the case might be, I can take this information and I've got full Excel functionality in order to make the changes that I want. Now once I've made these changes, I can save these files back and I'll show you how you can um, see that information right within the Dynamics GP product itself. Now one thing to mention, regarding the Excel reports, or excuse me, the reports when you publish information out from SmartList, is that the information, once it's published to Excel, is static. And so that will lead us into the next uh, part that we want to talk about is around Excel reports in just a few minutes. But essentially in this scenario, I've created my, my ad hoc report using a SmartList, and at that point, I published or exported the information out to Excel, but at that point, it's static information. So a real pain point for customers in the past is that they always want to see refreshed data. So what that meant is that somebody had to go in, export the information out of a, of a smart list into Excel, potentially reformat the information or reformat the um, Excel file based on what the report consumer wanted to see. And it was a continual process. So people would, you might spend a half hour, an hour every week, basically just going in, exporting information out of a smart list, reformatting the report, and then handing that off to somebody else. So a smart list, it's great. It's a great tool for doing ad hoc. It's a great tool for navigating and limiting data that's within your Dynamics GP application. But once the information's in Excel, again, it becomes static. So hence the, um, the feature for Excel reports and refreshable data. But again, we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. So going back to our smart list, we also have the option to create a new smart list or modify an existing smart list. So as I mentioned in, um, a few minutes ago, if I wanted to add a column to my existing smart list, I go to the columns button, select add, and I see a list of predefined columns that I can add to my smart list. Well, there are some cases where these columns or a column that you want to add is not available in that list. So what we've done is we've created a smart list designer to basically allow you to create a, a smart list from scratch. So in the upper left hand corner, we've got a new button. 
and that takes you into the Smart List Designer window. Now at this point, I can either choose to modify the existing Smart List for Minnesota customers that I've created. So in this case, we can see the selected fields. I can go ahead and I can modify this and add additional fields that way if they don't appear in that columns list. Or I can choose to create something from brand new. So we'll just go ahead and hit new and we'll just call this demo. In the product drop down list, we can see that we have Microsoft Dynamics GP as well as other applications that are loaded. So in this case, if I'm using a um, advanced scheduling or any, a third party product or an ISV product, that information would show up right in this drop down list. So it's not just limited to Microsoft Dynamics GP information, it also incorporates or allows you to incorporate information from other ISV products that you may have installed. So we'll just stick with Microsoft Dynamics GP for the product, and then you can select the series. And the series, again, is basically where the information is going to flow to once you've saved it. Okay, so looking on the left-hand side here, we've got Dynamics GP. We'll open up a table. Um, I will make quick, quick mention that we can do either tables or views. So we have SQL views available that you can use. And let's just go to our sales tables. And we'll go to a customer master table. It's fairly common. And we'll go ahead and expand that out. So if you remember in the first module with reporting services, this is a very similar look and feel as far as how to select the data and how to uh, select your fields and make them available for a smart list. So we intentionally tried to mimic it after the report builder experience so that people have a common experience when they're trying to create a smart list as, 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 as they do with a SQL report. Okay, so for this case, I'm going, going to do something very simple. Again, I'll just do customer name and customer number. And that's all I want from this table. So you can see as I select the fields, they become available. And let's see, we'll do do sales transaction work. We'll look for that table here. And we'll expand that window. And from that, we'll just do, let's just do a document type. Again, this is just something very simple. And we'll go ahead, now we can see that we've got information from two tables. We've got information from our RM Customer Master table and then information from our Sales Transaction Work table. Okay, so now at this point, we have two, two different uh, data sources, so we need to combine or relate the information in those two tables. So it's basically doing a join between the two tables. So I can see I, from my Customer Master table, I've got my customer number, and we'll do a left join. And from my Sales Transaction Work, we'll do uh, customer number as well. So again, it's, uh, it's information that pertains to both, both, um, both tables. And give me a minute and I'll find my number here. There we go, okay. So if I knew my data a little bit better, it'd probably be a smoother, <laughs> smoother demonstration. So I have two choices at this point, really. I can do a manual, um, a manual selection like I just did for a manual relationship, or I can just, just, just choose the auto link. So the auto link will basically look at the two different tables of information that I have and try and link those tables together based on common primary keys. So in this case, I just did the manual. Uh, we also have the option to do filters. So if I only, again, in this case, if I just wanted to see information pertaining to customers in Minnesota, I could simply go in and add a restriction for those customers. Okay, so the really nice thing about the Smart List Designer is that it's not necessarily a trial and error application. Uh, what we can do is once we have the information selected, we can essentially go in and we can run a query to see the information that's available. Again, in this case, I don't have information that's available in both, so let me go and see if I did something wrong on my, my joins. Uh, but again, I can do an auto link or I can do a join at this case. So now I've created my smart list. Again, it's very easy to do that. It's very easy to go in and make some modifications to the smart list itself. So again, I can execute the query and select OK. Again, based on the data that I have available to me, I didn't have anything that came back for these two fields or these two records. But essentially, it allows me to go in and again, create those columns of information. Now at this point, I've got a smart list. I can export it to Excel. 
whatever the case might be. I can go back in, I can modify, etc. So that's a smart list designer. So now in this case, we just covered smart lists and smart list designer. Again, it's an easy way to go in and do ad hoc reporting or ad hoc queries right within Microsoft Dynamics GP on Dynamics GP information. Again, looking at the smart list designer, you do have the opportunity to expand that out to uh, ISV products as well. It's not just a Microsoft Dynamics GP uh, data that you can go after for the smart list designer. And again, once you get the information into a smart list, you can utilize that in other areas of the application, whether it be a lookup or you can export it out to Excel. But again, going back to the Excel side of things, if you export it to Excel, it becomes static data. So that leads us into the next topic for this module, and that's Excel report deployment. So the Excel reports, really the bottom line between why we created the Excel reports, because it allows the users to go in and utilize Excel and Office data connections to refresh the data. So an example would be that I can open an Excel report, it queries the database and returns live data back to the report itself. So if you remember the kind of the pain point that I explained where uh, you might have users within your organization that go out, export data from Excel or excuse me, from a smart list, modify it, format it the way somebody wants to see it, save it, and uh, you know push it out to report consumers. In order, in order to avoid having to do that continuously, you know maybe it be once a day or once a week, is that we create these smart or excuse me Excel reports that have refreshable data. So essentially, you you go in, you format it the way you'd want, you save it. And every time you open up the report, it brings in live data from the application or GP database itself. So again, it saves a lot of those pain points or steps in order to avoid having to go through and basically reformat data every time you want to have refreshed information. So let's take a look at how you deploy those reports. So from Dynamics GP, we can go to the Administration tab. And we'll go down to the Reporting Tools Setup window. Now I will mention that for the uh, deployment, you have two options, very similar to what we had for reporting services in Module 1. The first option is that you can deploy your Excel reports in the Dyn Utilities process itself. So if you have an IT person going through, setting up, the, um, setting up the application for the first time or adding new companies, for example, each time you add a new company, you'll be asked if you want to deploy these Excel reports. So that's one option. The other option is that if you don't want to do the process or deployment within the Dyn Utilities process, that you can do it right within the Dynamics GP application itself. So navigating to the Reporting Tools Setup window, we have our tab for Excel reports. Now Excel reports, you have a few different options as well as far as how you want to deploy. You can say we're not implementing this. You can say we're going to a network share, or you can also go to an office, or excuse me, a SharePoint site. Now SharePoint can be on-premise SharePoint or we can use Office 365 or SharePoint Online. You choose whatever the best deployment option is for you and your company. Um, a network share will basically just use the security, Windows authenticated security that, or Active Directory security that you have set up within your organization. So if you deploy it out to a reports folder, uh, basically you grant access to that folder and individual reports on that folder itself. Uh, from a deployment standpoint, we deploy similar to what we did with reporting services. So we report, we deploy to a location, and then within that location, we deploy to a company, and then with, within each company, we have a series folder, and then within each series folder, we have a list of reports for that company in series. Um, for SharePoint, again, it's a little bit, it's, it's similar, but a um, little bit different. You're, you're navigating out to a SharePoint site. Again, this could be an Office 365 SharePoint or on-premise SharePoint. And it's a little bit different. You just have to enter a little bit different information as far as where you're deploying to. You're basically, instead of going to a network share, you're going to a reports library or a document library in SharePoint. Now, once it's in a SharePoint environment, all the security access is granted through SharePoint itself. So you go in, you go out to SharePoint library, you grant access to a, an individual folder, individual report, whatever, whatever level is best for your organization. You can go from a single report level security all the way up to I want to grant security access to everything in the company, for example. Now, once the, um, the information is deployed, and we'll just go with um, the network location, this is where I've deployed my reports. Now, with Office 365, there are a few changes that came forward since the... Um, 
the release of Dynamics GP 2013 that actually make the deployment to an online environment even easier than it was before. So again, you can, you can choose a SharePoint deployment in Office 365 if you choose to do that and essentially just enter the location of your reports library or document libraries you want to deploy to. The other thing that's really nice about Office 365 is that not only do you get the latest versions of Excel and latest versions of Office, but you also get great functionality as far as how to collaborate and share information. So an example is this. So I can go into my Office 365 environment. Just log in real quick. And in Office 365, it basically allows me to have information in Outlook, I got my calendar, I've got sky drives, I've got different uh, sites I can choose from. So it's really that, that overall experience that you get from SharePoint on-premise in, an on, in, in the cloud environment. So in this case, I've deployed out to my Office 365 environment, but I've kind of done it indirectly. And what I mean by that is with Office 365, you can sync your online directory or online library to a local data source or data, local, um, local, local um, location. So in this case, what I've done is I've got my SkyDrive Pro account and I've synced that up locally to just my C drive. So what that means for deployment is that instead of having to go out and identify what the libraries are and so forth for deployment, I simply just come in and say I'm going to deploy to a network share location and then I just point it to that SkyDrive location that's basically mapped down to my hard drive. So now once I've done the deployment, so from the application standpoint, it looks like it's deploying to a local environment, but essentially what happens is it deploys to that local SkyDrive, and then that local SkyDrive gets synced up to my Office 365 account. So in that case, it allows me to see the information online in Office 365. So let's take a look at this. So again, so we have our different folders. We have data connections. I created a folder for my reports. And I also have our folders for reports. So as we go into the reports folder, now we'll see that similar look and feel where we get in. We have um, access to information based on company. When I select CES, now I get the databases based on series and then down to the report itself. So again, based on security, you can look at securing right down to the report. You can go to the report category or series or you can grant security at the company level itself. So again, different avenues as far as security and how secure you need in individual documents to be. Okay, so moving along in the deployment window, uh, we have another field called the user level. And this would be utilized for my reports. So let's just for, say for instance, I created a report or I modified an Excel report and it's really just for me. So maybe it's something where I have a collections report with all my customers and I just want to keep it to myself. What I can do is I can define a location of where I want those reports to pull from. So in this case, it would be a My Documents type of location. Um, since it isn't, this is an IT experience in order to go in and set this, or administrator experience to set this window up, basically they just use a wild card for the user ID. So in this case, I'm just pointing to my local My Documents, My Excel Reports folder. And when I store individual documents into that folder, when I come into Microsoft Dynamics GP and retrieve my reports, it'll retrieve all the reports that I have security access from the SkyDrive Pro account. In addition to those reports, it'll retrieve the reports that are stored locally in my documents or my, my documents, my Excel reports folder. So again, it gives me an option to say, I want to create a report that's available for everybody within the organization or everybody that has security access to the report out in an Office 365 environment or in a local network share environment. And in addition to that, I can get to and view information that's pertaining to just me that really nobody else you know, might not really care about or shouldn't actually have access to information. So I can store those locally in the My Documents folder. All right, so going back into the deployment, once I've got my location set up and so forth, I can go in and I can see uh, my two different companies. When I expand each company, I can see I've got SRS and Excel deployment options. And you can see I've got the little green check mark showing that I've already deployed my Excel reports uh, for Contoso Electronics. I can go in and I can, tr I can go and redeploy the reports if I choose to do so. And I also have a, um, a report that I can print out showing me the status of the deployment for all the companies. So if there's a report or excuse me, Excel report that may have not deployed that you're looking for, you can always check back on this report and see what the status was, whether the, the uh, report deployment was successful or failed. 
Um, once you've selected your checkbox, it's just a matter of going through and checking the or clicking the Deploy Reports button, and the reports will deploy. Um, for the Excel reports, we have over 250 Excel reports that are available right within the Dynamics GP application by simply going through and, and deploying. Um, again, this doesn't mean you can't create your own, uh, but basically this is a starting point. You can modify the ones that we provide or create your own report if you choose to do so. Okay, so let's go back and recap. So that's basically your Excel report deployment. Again, we have about 250 reports that are available within Microsoft Dynamics GP. The deployment can be to an Office, three, um, a SharePoint site on premise, Office 365 environment, or local network share. So again, you choose what's best for your organization or where you want to store the reports. Okay, so now we've got our reports deployed, so now what? So let's look at our integration, port, re, integration points, how the reports look, how they function, and some different co uh, collaboration opportunities that are available because of the Office integration that we have. So going back to my Dynamics GP product, we'll go ahead and close the window. Okay, so we'll start from our home page once again, just to kind of have a set baseline navigation. Okay, so once we've deployed our Excel reports, we can see a list of all the reports by going to the Administration tab and then selecting Excel reports. So again, this will give me a list of all the, the Excel reports that I have available for Contoso Electronics. Now, one thing I will point out is that once you do your navigate, or excuse me, once you do your deployment of your Excel reports, if you've done the deployment within Microsoft Dynamics GP through that reporting tool setup window, if you've deployed your reports that way, you do have to log out of the application and come back in in order to see this Excel reports option in your navigation, or excuse me, in your, in your report list. So, um, so if you do your deployment within GP and you come into this administration tab and you don't see Excel, it means that the application basically hasn't recognized the navigation to it at this point. So just close the application, restart it, and you'll be, you'll be good to go with this, with this um, option for your Excel reports. Okay, so now at this point we have our Excel reports. Uh, we can also go to, to our different navigation buttons. And for instance, if we go to sales, the information pertaining to the reports is filtered based on sales related information. So again, we, because we have those reports filtered or deployed by series, we can filter on that as well. So again, you don't have to go through and, and look at a um, you know, whole list of 343 reports for this example. You can go in and just look at the reports that are pertaining to sales based on the series that we're deployed to. Okay, so let's take a look and let's just say we look at customer's default. So at this point, we can select it. We go ahead and view. And you notice now the information is coming back in an Excel environment rather than in a, a smart list environment. So as I alluded to before, I'll go ahead and I'll delete this information. So if I was using a smart list and I deleted the information, there would be no way to get this back from within Excel. I would have to go back to my smart list and re-export. So with the Office data connections that are used to get live data, I simply go into data and hit refresh, and it queries the data out of my, my database and brings the information back. So again, it's a very quick and easy way to create a report once, format it, save it, make it available to the users that need to see or consume this information and kind of forget about it. You don't have to go back in and continually update the information. It's just a matter of come in, refresh the data, and you're ready to go. Now, I'll touch on this on security a little bit, but um, the way the security is set up on the reports themselves is that we don't save information on the report. So when I go into the report and I close the report, do we have a checkbox in the connection properties in Excel that basically says remove all the data when I, when I close the workbook. And what this does is basically in, it forces the authentication of the user before they retrieve any information back just to ensure that they do have security access to the actual data and not just the file itself. So I'll get into that a little bit more when we talk about security. Okay, so let's take another example. We'll just leave that one. And let's look at customer balance. So we're gonna take our customer balance and we'll go ahead and double click or else view, whichever you choose. Okay, now again, because I'm in an Excel environment, I have all the tools available in Excel. There's really, there's no difference whatsoever uh, because we are, we are in Excel natively. So I can do you know, quick, simple things. Maybe I wanna do a quick format, make these dollar signs, and uh, you know, maybe I just wanna look at the top 10. So I can look at my top 10 items real quick. 
Um, another thing, again, more people are or more visual than data depending on the role they have in the organization. So I can quickly go in and add a chart and shows me top 10 customers, for example, with the balances. So we'll go ahead and change that. Okay, so now I've got the report and now I can store it. So at this point, I have an option. I can choose to store it locally. I can choose to store it in the uh, folder that has the My Documents folder, and it's just available to me. Or I can store this out on, on the network or out on Office 365 and make this available to other users within the organization as well, granted that they would have security access to the report. So we'll go ahead and we'll do File and we'll do Save. And if you notice, if I go back to my local computer and browse, I still have that SkyDrive Pro account that's available to me, and I can just store it here, and I can store it in that folder that I created called My Reports. So we'll call this sample, and we'll go ahead and save that. Now once that information is saved up into my Office 365 environment, or I should say what basically what's happening is it's taking that information and it's storing it to that local C drive account that I had set up. And so in this case, it, it's, it's um, basically going to my local C drive, to that SkyDrive Pro account. And then at that point, it will sync up to my Office 365 environment and allow me to see that information across different applications that I might be using or different devices. So as I switch over to Office 365 and come into my SkyDrive again, you can see my reports. And now we can see that that sample that I just um, created shows up in my Office 365 environment. So you think, well, okay, what's the big deal? So I, you know, I saved it to a different location. But really what you have to do is think about how you can really leverage this within your organization. You know, if you're a customer, you, at this point, because it's online, you have access to this information regardless of the device that you're using. So I could use a phone, I could use a, you know, a tablet, whatever the case might be. As long as I have access to that, basically my, a, web, uh, a website in Office 365, I have access to this information. So it's really, the, the scenario you'd really want to go after would be the customers, or excuse me, the users within your organization that don't necessarily go into the Dynamics GP application at all. You know, they might be more or less an executive level um, persona within the application where they don't have a login to Dynamics GP. You probably don't want them to have a login to Dynamics GP because they don't want, you know, things getting messed up and this and that. So what you do is you push the information out to an environment where they can access the information. So again, in this case, we push it out to an Office 365 environment. They can, they can open the, the report, again, depending on the device they're using opens the report, you'll notice that it came up with enable content, which basically means that it came back as a blank data sheet until it recognized who I was and authenticated who I was and was able to return the data based on the information I have access to. So again, just because I'm creating that report doesn't mean that you necessarily have access to it. If you don't have security access to the information itself, um, it comes up with a blank report. So it's kind of that, you know, that security layer from mistakenly just granting security to a report but you still have to have security access to the data behind it. Okay, so now you can see we've got the same report that I just launched in Excel, and it's available um, right within Office 365. The other thing I want to show is a little, um, go back to my PowerPoint slide here, is showing you know, not only the integration points and collaboration, but some additional things that you can do within Microsoft Dynamics GP. So I'm gonna switch back to my GP application for just a minute. Okay, so let's say that this customer balance report is something that I want to use regularly. Um, I don't necessarily have to come back in to the report list in order to get the information I need. So what I can do is I'll unselect the report, I'll just go with my customer balance, and if this is something that I use on a daily basis or on a very frequent basis, what I can do is I can select to add to my reports. And so basically the add to my reports is functionality that allows you to basically tag or designate reports that you use very frequently and be able to make those easily available right from your home page. So we'll go ahead, we'll go ahead and add that as a my report. And as we navigate back to our home page and go down to my reports, now we can see that that same report has been added right to my report section on the home page. So again, it, 
the whole purpose behind this is to make this very easy, very seamless, so that once you find the information that you need, it's very easy to change the navigation to it to make it very easy to get to. Um, again, the other purpose would be that I can collaborate with others so that if you're not a GP user, you don't have a login, whatever the case might be, that I can, you still need access to this information in order to successfully run your business and make business decisions. So we push this information out into an environment where you can get it, um, get to it, rather, again, based on a, a local network, share drive, or an Office 365 environment that allows you to basically download and make this information available on any device. The other thing that's great about Office 365 and in integration with that is I also have integration into Outlook. So we'll go ahead and open up my Outlook client. And while that's opening up, I'll switch back to Office 365. So here's how you do your sync. So essentially what happens is if I go into my Office 365 environment and go to my SkyDrive, I have a sync button on the right-hand side, upper right-hand side. When I select the sync button, basically that's what does the mapping between my Office 365 environment and my local C drive. So I had that SkyDrive Pro account that was mapped to my C drive. That's basically how you get the sync to work is by just selecting this option in the upper right-hand corner. So that's how I can sync um, you know, everything within, the, within that SkyDrive to a local account. But I can also sync this information up into an, another application that I use very frequently, and that's Office, or excuse me, Outlook. So if I want to sync the information that's available in this document library to my Outlook account, I basically just select the Connect to Outlook, and it goes through the steps, and it just basically prompts me and says, do you really want to do this? And I say yes, and that's basically it for the steps. So when I move over to Outlook now, and I go in and I look down at my SharePoint list, now I can see that same, those same reports that were available. I can see those same reports available in Outlook itself. So again, it's a very easy way for me to take something and share it and collaborate with others and put it into the hands or in the application that they use most. So again, a lot of executives out there will use Outlook because they're you know, constantly looking at their calendars, managing calendars where they need to be and meetings and so forth. Why not put that information right at the hands and where they're going to use it on the, um, in the application they're going to use most? So again, I can take it and I can put it in the Office 365 environment. And at that point, I can share it out and make it available in um, you know, common applications like your, your Outlook account, for example. So again, very easy to go in and collaborate with others using that information. So the last part we'll talk about will be security. So from a security standpoint, it's using Windows Authenticated Security. So you do have to grant security to the information in the SQL database as well as the report itself. So for an example, if I come back into my local drive and look at my SkyDrive Pro, you can see these are my reports that I've defined. When I come into here, I have to grant security to this location. So in this case, if I want to grant security for this entire reports folder, I can do that. I can do it um, individual based on the company that I'm logged into, series, and right down to the individual reports. So again, it's, if I'm going to a local drive or a network share, it's easy for me to go in and act or grant security based on Active Directory. If I've deployed out to a SharePoint site or an Office 365 site, then I would use the security within SharePoint or Office 365 in order to grant security. Again, the security model is the same regardless if you're going on-premise or to an Office 365 or SharePoint site. Um, essentially, you can grant security at from all the way from the highest level down to the individual report itself if you choose to do so. Again, looking at each report, we are using Windows Authenticated Security, so this is not using your security model from Microsoft Dynamics GP. So you would have to go into SQL and create a Windows authenticated user and then grant security to the, um, to the information they need to see. So there's still kind of two layers of security. So another common scenario that people run into is they go out and they grant security access to a report at this location, for example. Well, that's just granting security access for somebody to see the report. It's not necessarily granting access for them to see the data on the report. So in this case, I would go in I grant access to the report based on the, the network drive or the SharePoint site where it's been deployed to, and then I go into SQL, create a Windows authenticated SQL user, and then assign that security to the reports themselves. So again, I have to look at two locations or a grant security at two different locations in order for that to work. 
Um, so let's go back and look at the report that I created for my report. And let's see, we'll go back to my report. Okay, so let's take the sample and I'll go ahead and open the sample report. Okay, so this is again based on uh, the information pulling from the SQL report, or excuse me, pulling from the Excel database. And just again, I just took the information and I made it more visual and created a chart for this on top of this data. Okay, so how do I grant security or how do I modify the security in this? So let's go ahead and get rid of these reminders here. All right, let's try that again. Try and reopen that report real quick. Okay, so one thing I did want to show is that you notice that when the report first opens, there is no data coming back on the report itself. So again, this ensures that I'm going back to the SQL Server and I'm pulling information based on if I'm authenticated to, to have access to that information. So once I click Enable Content, it makes the connection, authenticates who I am, and brings the information back. Okay, so this is how the actual connection or the refresh works. So behind each Excel report is what we call a data connection. The data connection is an office data connection, or ODC, that's attached to each Excel report. That office data connection essentially is a query that goes back and looks at, look at the definition, basically goes back and queries the customer balance view that we're pulling information for, and it selects these a couple fields and orders the fields on how we want to do that. So it's um, basically a SQL query built into this, to the Excel report with a data connection string that when you launch the report, again, goes back, makes the connection, authenticates who you are, and then brings back the information that you have defined in your query. So if you, by default, all the Excel reports that we deploy have this button or checkbox saying remove data when basically when the report is closed or saved. Essentially what that does is that forces that report to be blank when you first open it. Just like we saw when I opened that report, the report was blank. I had to click on edit content in order to get the information back or authenticate who I am and bring the information back. If you choose to remove this and not refresh the data on open, essentially what will happen is that if I choose to do that and if I close the report and reopen it, the information is stored with the report itself. So in that case, I wouldn't have the security access necessarily um, that I did before. So I go ahead and reopen this report. Now you can see that I'm not prompted for enabling the content anymore. It just brings the information back. So it's always good practice to, again, it depends on the information that you're representing within your report, but it's always good practice to, to keep that default setting where we want to, we don't want to store any information with the report. And that way, if you accidentally grant security access to a report on your network share, for example, when somebody opens that report, maybe it's a payroll report, they open the report, if they don't have authenticated um, access to go back and actually pull the data out of a SQL, they can open the report and nothing will come back. It just says you don't have any security access to the data. So it's really, you know, it's really a security measure in place to say, you know what, in case you make a mistake in granting security access, we want to make sure they really have access to the data itself before we grant them or bring that information back. So, Again, I would highly recommend you keep the checkbox as is because it's the default. But again, if you have a report that really, you know, maybe there's not really that much confident, there's no confidential information on the report itself, um, you can uncheck the checkbox, store the information on the report when you save it and close it. And then the only difference would be that it, at that point, it becomes a, more of a manual refresh, so you'd have to come in and refresh the data at that point. So again, you can do it either way. Um, but it's just more, more secure to keep the default checkbox there to, to remove the data as you when you close or store or, or, excuse me, save the report. So that's just a, uh, getting into how the security works. Again, it's, it's the security based on your Windows authenticated user. It's not your SQL, or excuse me, it's not your SQL ID or, or GP user ID. Okay, so what we've learned in module two around smart lists and Excel reports. So we learned why smart lists are an important part of ad hoc reporting. Again, it's very easy to go in. It's very easy to create a smart list, uh, modify a smart list, save it as a favorite, 
utilize that in other areas of the application, whether it be limiting the information I want to see in the lookup or what have you, being able to quickly navigate to a form and be able to edit a record or just do an inquiry on a record. It's very easy to do that. Um, again, it's also very simple to take that information that appears in your query, export it out to Excel, Word, whatever the case might be, and work with that data further. Um, we also looked at the um, Smart List Designer where you can go in and basically create your own Smart List and have that information available as a, in a query format. Again, then you have all the f existing functionality of the Smart List uh, from one that you built from scratch. Um, we also had looked at deployment for Excel reports, whether you're deploying to an Office 365 environment, SharePoint on-premise environment, or a network share environment. The ability to do so very quickly, very easily, uh, whether you want to deploy your Excel reports through the Down Utilities process or you can ex deploy your reports from using the reporting tool setup window within Microsoft Dynamics GP itself if you choose to do that. Um, integration points, and again, looking at the points within Microsoft Dynamics GP application itself, whether it be the report lists and you know viewing all the reports, Excel reports I want to see, or if I want to just look at reports that pertaining to sales, looking at the sales module and, and just the reports that pertain to sales, I can quickly do that. Um, Office 365 integration and the benefits with that. Again, just recapping is that I can publish to an Office 365 or online environment. Now at that point, if I can hit the web, I can hit the data. So it doesn't matter the device I'm on, but it, I can have access to the information without having to force me to log into Microsoft Dynamics GP to get it. Um, again, that more of that executive level role where I don't have access to the GP application, but I do have access to the internet, I do have access to Outlook, and it's very um, a, an easy process for me to get that information I need in order to run my business. And then lastly, we looked at how to configure your security with Excel reports. Again, just as a recap, the Excel reports are using Windows Authenticated Security. You do need to secure the reports um, themselves. And you can do that at a company level, series level, or at the report level itself. You need, and you also need to grant security in two locations. One on the, the um, location where you deploy the reports itself, and then within the SQL database itself to have, actually have access to the data. And again, going back to storing the data with the Excel report, by default, we don't store any information with the report when we close it or save the report. And that's basically another security measure so that when you, you, if you accidentally granted access to the report, the person that doesn't necessarily have access to the data on the report. So just another security gap for that or a, um, security area that we, can, we enforce on the Excel reports. Again, you can turn that off if you choose to do that, um, especially for information that um, doesn't have any information that should not be shared within your organization. So the only difference would be if you do that, um, you need to go back and you need to do a manual refresh on the reports because they won't refresh when you, when you open them up. So that's a recap of module two, smart lists and Excel reports.